Good morning and happy Easter. Happy welcome, Easter. welcome to our Easter celebration. My name is Kathy Case and my co-lector this morning is Tracy Madrigal. Please stand as we greet our priest, Father Bill. <coughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, it is 0530 hours, 530 in the morning. You know, when Father Bob first came uh, to Nativity, the first Easter that he celebrated, he said, we need another venue so that we can accommodate all of the people worshiping here to, uh, for Easter Sunday. And so we started the first mass at the firehouse at Station 14, at, at the first 530 mass. And uh, what a beautiful thing it was. And I would always uh, comment while we were there uh, because we were in the firehouse and many of the firefighters came to join us for this beautiful day. Um, we, uh, I always acknowledge the fact that, that they were first responders. Well, you all have that title today. You are first responders on this Easter Sunday morning as we wait for the sun to rise. What a great joy it is for me to be able to join with you uh, on this special, special day. And now, my dear friends, let us take a moment to examine our lives as we acknowledge our sins and the many blessings God has given to us. We prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people. Glory to God, glory to God, glory 
O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all of the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all of the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and, on, and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles. But their story seemed like nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up ran to the tomb, bent down, and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you found that reading, if you were following along with that reading, uh, if you found that one in the documents that you have in front of you, but I've always chosen this particular one because we're allowed to choose among the ABC readings uh, for, the, uh, for, the Easter, uh, for the Easter Sunday. And I always chose this one for a particular reason. Is a, uh, we are here welcoming ourselves to Easter, for he is truly risen, as the gospel says. Alleluia. Welcome, I say to each and every one of you, to the church, to this church, founded by three women who got up early in the morning. Yeah, lots of the women get that here, yes. The church founded by three women who got up early in the morning, Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. They went without fear, and they should have been afraid, because uh, they went, what they were doing was a dangerous thing, but they went. They truly were, uh, as, I, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, the first, first responders. So looking at this congregation this morning, I'm reminded of those words of our Lord when he said, where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. Well, he surely is here this morning. Today we hear in this gospel the story of discovery. It's the discovery of an empty tomb. It's the same way in all of the gospel presentations. Some different characters are mentioned, but, but uh, it is an empty tomb that is found. But we, we are a people that knows the rest of the story. Imagine those first people who went to that tomb and found it that way and uh, all of the things that followed on from that. Uh, imagine how mystified they must have been, how, how uh, a per per particularly concerned they must have been for their safety, how they struggled, they must have struggled to understand. What is this that's happening before our eyes? But we are fortunate enough to know the fullness, the rest of the story. We are not just a Good Friday people or an empty tomb people. We are a people that know the fullness of the story that have received the revelation of our salvation, why all of this had to be and why all of it happened. We have the fullness of the gospel, the witness of the blood of thousands upon thousands of martyrs and the lives of countless saints who have taught us and taught us how to defend the faith. And for most of us, of course, 
We have those other people in our lives, our parents, our grandparents, our neighbors, people who have introduced us to the, the mystery uh, that is our faith, who have been models of faith for us. There are two constants in, in all the gospel accounts of Easter. Number one, Christ is risen. And number two, Mary Magdalene is the first to arrive at the tomb. What she and other, others find there, of course, is this empty tomb. The disciples are confused. They do not remember or understand, perhaps, the teaching that, their Lord, that our Lord gave to them about his coming resurrection. They kept wondering as they were walking along, uh, what, what, was, what did he mean by that? What did he mean, resurrection? But the story, uh, the gospel story of today and the, in all of the gospel readings ends abruptly with the disciples leaving and returning to their homes in confusion. But we are not confused. An empty tomb for us does not, does, uh, for them, does not necessarily mean resurrection. They were still having to discover that. But in the rest of the story, Mary Magdalene stays behind. That beautiful woman, what a, what a, a, a thing she is for us, a, a person that we should always remember what she did. She stays behind and she discovers Jesus, the first one to recognize him, remember, in the garden, even though she didn't immediately recognize uh, her, uh, our Lord, but uh, when he mentioned her name. He said the name Mary, and she immediately knew who it was. And so, like Magdalene and, and the others, we come here today. We come here also seeking, and we have to ask ourselves, what are we seeking for? The same thing. What Jesus says to her, he says to us, well, who are you looking for? What are you looking for? When he finally says that name, Mary, instantly she knows the voice, and she runs runs to tell all the others, I have seen the Lord, she says. That is why she is called by many uh, people, many uh, people much smarter than me in our, in our, in our faith formation, the, the apostle to the apostles. Today, like the disciples, indeed, uh, in the stories to come, in the weeks to come, we will hear the stories about the men on the road to Emmaus, we, ourselves, are gradually led to recognition and inner transformation in our Eucharist. On the way, Jesus joins us on the road that recognizes his presence in this assembly today as we recognize him on the road. He opens the meaning of the scriptures. That means that he is present in the word that has just been proclaimed to us. He goes on to mention his, his, uh, his, this, this, he breaks bread with them, showing the, his presence in our Eucharist, here in this place, which su with such a wonderful assembly of persons, people, uh, people of God, there is among us a rich, rich sacramentality. It is an assembly here gathered, already gifted with the risen Lord's presence, coming forward to bring their gifts to the altar. This brings the whole church throughout the world, the universal church. This brings all of this together, united at this table of our Lord, which we celebrated this, this banquet, banquet, the people and his ministers, ready for the next step in the doing. Do this, he says, in memory of me. And that is what we're doing. In this great sharing of our communion, our experience of his presence is fully completed. Now we are able to run out like Mary Magdalene did, to run out from this place and declare in her words, we have seen the Lord. Indeed, we have seen him. He has been given to us for our salvation. And so, in just a few moments, we will have the opportunity to, to, to declare and renew our baptismal promises. You all know that when, uh, when the, the Church of Nativity sprinkles its people, everybody gets wet. 
That's an important thing to, to always uh, embrace. As we prepare for this, as Christ rose with a glorified body, we too must rise with a transformed, with a, indeed a glorified spirit. And so let us reflect as we begin to uh, renew our baptismal promises on what it is that we renounce. We renounce things. The world we live in is a world filled with violence and prejudice and indifference. These things we renounce. If we harbor feelings of anger or resentment or selfishness, these things we renounce. If we recognize that we belong to a church that has been and is being persecuted to this very day for this, we, can, we must rejoice and give thanks to God. For only a crucified church can present a crucified Christ to the world. And so today we proclaim for all the world to hear, Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. My prayer for all of you that call this beautiful church the Church of the Nativity home for all of our visitors this day is that you have a blessed and happy Easter and a heart that truly knows and grows in love for this, our risen Lord Jesus Christ. For he is risen. Can you say, Alleluia? Alleluia. Now, my friends, please stand and renew our, your baptismal promises. I ask each and every one of you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of all bodies, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself, to share in our humanity. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness. We receive this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. having a problem finding my, my spot here, I'm sorry. <laughs> <coughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation.
<clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O oh Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with all the angels sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim... I forgot to do, and that is, I knew I was forgetting something, and that is the universal prayer, please. Let, uh, uh, we offer all of these prayers to our Lord Jesus Christ at this time. Our response is, God of love, hear our prayer. God of love, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Bishop Michael, our priests, deacons, and religious, and the entire people of God, that we may commit our lives to God each day, we pray to the Lord. God Lord, of love, hear our prayer. For the people of the Holy Land and other troubled places of our world, that God will give courage to all leaders to make new efforts for peace and justice and for the safety of the men and women serving in the military, our police officers, first responders, and those in foreign service, we pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. For all those who have experienced abandonment, abandonment, who have been deserted by family or friends, or who have been accused unjustly, that they may know God's presence with them and have strength to hold to the truth, we pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. For all who are carrying the cross of fear, anger, depression, or addiction, that many others, like Simon, offer to help them bear their burdens, we pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have died, especially Margaret Joust, wife of Kenneth Joust, Sophie Rose Rutolo, mother of Joyce Kelly and mother-in-law of Deacon Richard Kelly, Joe Dizuti, Paul Binocoli, cousin-in-law of Mary Balberchak, that they now rest comfortably in the presence of God. We pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. For each of us and the silent intentions that we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayer. God our Father, we give you thanks for all the many blessings you have given to us. Accept these prayers we offer you this day. Hear and answer each one of them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never <laughs> cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, 
we humbly implore you by that same spirit. Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you have willed to reconcile us to yourself, granted we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Mary Magdalene and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. <coughs> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Sure. 
Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by these paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> We have some announcements to make today. The Diocese of Arlington is offering Work Camp 2021 in Nativity's own backyard. This is a service week for current 9th through 12th graders and will be an awesome experience to grow in their faith. Work Camp begins Sunday, June the 20th and ends Friday, June the 25th. Because of the pandem pandemic, that week will look a little different. We will meet for Mass every morning do a project in our local community, and we'll return home every night. We still have some spots available, so if you're interested, please contact the office by April the 7th. Nativity will be hosting a father and son event, the Countercultural Man, on Saturday, April 11th, at 10 a.m. in the cafeteria. The event is for middle school and high school boys and their fathers. There's no cost to attend. Sign up is available on the parish website. Contact Jennifer Sturgeon at the office with any questions. I want to say thank you to all who have made the Easter Mass here so beautiful. Altar servers, porters, lectors, <laughs> sacristans. This doesn't just happen, as you all know. The Art and Environment Committee decorated the church inside and out. 
musicians, choirs, their directors made our praise of God so wonderful. So on behalf of Father Bob, Father Hayes, Father Vicaro, Father Wilson, Deacon Kelly, Deacon Jonathan Smith, the sisters, and all of the staff, and myself included, I wish you all a blessed and joyful Easter. Bow your heads and pray for God's <clears throat> blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his, in his compassion defend you from every uh, uh, assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help, exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and those you love, remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.